This question says that the functions of cos 2x and sin x plus 45 are given. Uh, use the answer sheet, which is this one over here, to sketch the graphs. Okay, six marks, guys, and it's going between minus 190, <laughs> minus 90 and 180. Now, this is easy marks. Why? Because we're going to do it on the calculator. Let me show you. Step one, put your calculator into table mode. So you say mode, and then you look for table. Now I've got the silver calculator, but maybe you have a pink, blue, or black one, and so it might be a different number, but you're looking for table, and there we go, f of x. So let's go write out the equation of f of x, which is cos, so we're gonna say cos two. Now it says cos two x, so how do you get a x? Well, can you see that on your calculator, look at one of those um, brackets. I think it's the right-hand side bracket. There is an X there, but it's in red. So you push the red alpha button, so push alpha, and then push that bracket, and that'll be cos 2X. Press equals. G of X, this is your other equation. So that's gonna be sin, so you push sin, alpha, the right bracket again, plus 45, close the bracket, press equals. The starting position is the starting position that they have given us. Can you see in the X is an element, there is minus 90. That is your starting position. Okay. Press equals. Your ending position is what they've given us, which is 180. Press equals. Now, step we need to talk about. For the step, I'll bring the calculator back soon, but for the step, this is so important. It is gonna be the period of your graph divided by four. Now, a normal graph like this, a sin graph, has a period of 360, because this x plus 45, that just moves the graph left and right. It doesn't change the period. What I mean by that is the following. A sin graph goes to 360. A cos graph also does that. If you move the graph a little bit left, then it's just gonna look like that. But this distance from one, or, or let me do that properly, sorry. That distance from start to finish is still gonna be 360, okay? But this graph here, and okay, so first of all, a normal cos graph is 360. That distance is 360 degrees. However, if you change this number, if you make that a two, it actually makes the graph shorter it halves the graph, so it goes, um, so where this graph end, uh, yes, it would end over there. So it's gonna make it a little bit shorter and it's gonna end over there at exactly halfway. So how long does the green graph take to complete? Well, it'll only be 180. If you ever wanna work out the period of a graph that has a number there, all you do is you just use this formula. You just say period equals to 360, and that's, that's the, that is the normal cos and sin period, and then divide it by this number, and that'll give you 180. So now we have a little bit of a weird scenario. We've got two graphs that we're gonna draw. One of them has a period of 360, which is the sin graph, and one of them has a period of 180. Well, you are gonna have to take the smaller period um, and use that one for this whole thing. So for your step, you are gonna say 180, not 360. You're gonna use the smallest period and you're gonna divide that by four and that is gonna be 45 degrees. So let's go back to the calculator and we are gonna change the step to 45 equals. And now it populates, that's a nice word, Kevin. It populates um, all of the values that you are gonna need for your calculator. So it's got all the X values, you see them, going all the way between minus 90. Let me explain. See how it starts at minus 90, then it goes to minus 45, and then it goes to zero, then to 45. So you see how it's stepping by 45? That's what we told the calculator. And it's gonna go up to 180. Why doesn't it go past 180? Because we told it that we wanted to go we said the starting position is minus 90 and the ending position is 180. Now, for the y values, we've got the y values for the first graph, which is f, and so we've got all of its y values, okay? And then we've got all of the y values for the graph of g, and there they are. And so now we literally just need to go plot all of those points. And so there are all of the values that we are going to use. Okay, so, we need to just think about how we want to label um, all of this. So, um, okay, so we only on the negative side, we're only going to have negative 90 and negative 45. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let every three lines be 45. So that'll be 45, 90, 
135 and 180. That works perfectly. Minus 45 and minus 90. Okay, so let's quickly just go put that in nicely there. 45, 90, 135, 180. Uh, negative 45, negative 90. Okay, and then the y values are going to go all the way between, um, I think the largest one is 1 and the smallest one is negative 1. So I think I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let 1 be up here and then minus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be there. 1, 2, yeah. And then this would be, um, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So let, we don't really have to write that down, but 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So we space it out as much as we can. You don't want to draw like little graphs here and like that. Like, come on, bro. It's got to be more expanded. You know what I mean? So we can actually see how it goes. Okay. So um, minus one. So let's go plot. So now we can go plot. So we're gonna. I'm gonna start with um, this x value of minus ninety, and the graph of f has a y value of negative one. So that's gonna be over there. Okay. Then I'm going to plot this point. So the x value is negative 45 and the y value is 0. So that's that point. Then it's the x value of 0 and a y value of 1. So this is just the first graph. This is f. So that's over there. And then 45 and 0, which is there. 90 and minus 1. 135 and 0. 180 and 1. And now we can connect. And so that is the graph of f. Now for the next graph, which is g, so we're going to start with an x value of minus 90 and a y value of negative 0 0.7. So let's go to our x value of minus 90. Okay, now you see this is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or negative. So 0 0.7 would be somewhere in between. So that would be over there. Okay, um, and, then, and then the next point is minus 45 and 0. So that's over there. Uh, 0 and 0 0.707, so that would be over here, and then 45 and 1, so 45 and 1, 90 and 0 0.707, which would be over there, and then 135 and 0, there we go, and then lastly 180 and negative 0 0.7, which would be over there. And so that is the graph of G. See, I just took the arrows away. I'm not sure if you saw that there were arrows there, but we don't actually want to show arrows because they've given us a clear ending and um, yeah, the ending positions. Okay, so there we've drawn it, but now they say, please indicate all turning points. Okay, so let's go do that. So this one, the coordinates here would be zero for X and one for Y. Um, here we have a turning point where X is nine, sorry, X is 45 and y is 1. Um, here we have a turning point, uh, x is 90, and y is negative 1. And then this is actually a turning point over here as well, because if you think about it, this graph's going like, um, like that, and then it would actually be turning. So that's negative 90 and negative 1. So there's the turning points. Then they said the intercepts that the graphs make with the axes. Okay, so that would be this point over here, which was x0, y0.71. I'm just going to round that to two decimal places. Um, this here is another one, so that's x is minus 45, y as 0. Here we have x as 45, y as 0. Um, here we have x is 135, y as 0. And so there we've done all the intercepts with the axes. Okay, so here they want us to find the range of f. Now f is the red graph. Okay, so the lowest y value is negative 1 and the highest y value is positive 1. So you always do the lowest y value first. So we could say y is an element from negative 1 up to positive 1. I'll show you how to use set builder soon or like in a few seconds. Um, so that's both of these are included because the graph touches those points. Now, this next part is we say y will be bigger than negative 1 and smaller than equal to 1. That's if you prefer set builder. So for this question, it says that we need to find the period of g. Now, g was um, this graph, which was the sin graph, which is sin of x plus 45. And what we said was that this graph um, is a normal sin graph that has moved 45 degrees left. So if you take a graph, a normal sin graph, which has a period of 360, and you move it a little bit to the left, it's still going to have the same period. The period is the distance 
to make one complete cycle. So the period will still be 360, um, which is what a normal sin graph is. This last one says that what is the number of the number of x values where these two graphs are equal? The two graphs are equal wherever they cross over. So they cross over there, they cross over there, and they cross over there. So that is three times. So we can just say here, three, or we can actually just say three. This question for only two marks says, determine the values of x, um, but now it only says between zero and 180. So that means we're not looking at any of this over here, okay? So we're only going between zero and 180, and they wanna know where will this graph multiplied by this graph um, be smaller than or equal to zero. So if you've watched my videos on how to do these questions, what you'll remember is the following. And so for these types of questions, we need to make a table, okay? So the way that the table works is, well, we have these different scenarios. So, um, okay, I'm not gonna have enough space. So if you have a cos 2x graph, and then you have the sin x plus 45 graph, okay? And then you also need to write out what happens if you multiply them. So cos 2x multiplied by sin of x plus 45. So you could have different scenarios. Cos could be positive and sin could be positive as well. I'll explain what all of that means shortly. You could also have a scenario where cos is positive and sin is negative, okay? Now, you could have other scenarios, but I'm gonna have to put that in a different area, maybe over here. So you could have a scenario where cos is negative and sin is positive, or where cos graph is negative and this one is also negative. Okay, now, let's say they both were positive then if you had to multiply those two positives, you would get a positive over here. Here you have a positive and a negative, so that would be negative. Here you have a negative and a positive, which would be a negative. And here you have a negative and a negative, which is a positive. Okay, now they wanna know where is the product smaller than, that means smaller than zero, so that means negative. So we want this scenario, and we also want uh, this scenario. So I'm gonna scratch out all the others, okay? And then I'm gonna put this one um, down at the bottom here. So where cause is negative and sin is positive because that gave us a negative. Okay, so what am I actually doing here? So let's start with this first one. They wanna know where is cause negative. Now when they say negative, they mean under the x-axis. You know, um, if you have a graph that is above, um, that's where we say that it's being positive. When it's below the x-axis, that's where it's negative. So we wanna know where is the cos graph under the x-axis. So, okay, so remember that the cos graph is graph um, F, which is this red one. So where is it negative? Well, it's here. Here's where it's under the x-axis, okay? Now at the same time, they want the graph of, um, they want the sin graph to be positive. So that graph is the, uh, that's the G graph, so they want that one to be positive, so it must be above the x-axis. So that's over here, up to there. So where is the overlap? Well, the overlap is from here up to here. So we can say that, I'll show you set builder notation as well, you could say that X is an element going from 45, and we can include the 45 because they are also including, all the way up to 135, okay. If you were doing set builder, you would say x is bigger than 45 and smaller than or equal to 135. Okay, now we need to go and look at the second scenario where the cos graph is positive and the sin graph is negative. Okay, so we are gonna see where is the cos graph, which is graph F, the red one, where is that positive? So that means above. So that's there and there, up to that point. Um, and then we also need to see where is the sin graph um, negative, which means below. Whoops. Which means below. So that is there. So where's the overlap? It's only that part. So now this is quite interesting. So you see how in this answer we went all the way up to 135, but now we can actually just let the answer carry on um, up, to, up to this ending position, which is at 180. So instead of saying X is an element from 45 to 135, we can say from 45 up to 180, um, and we can include that point. And then if you prefer set builder notation, you could say from 45 up to 180.
because we're going up to 135 for this first part and then this answer goes from 135 anyways so we might as well just say that it's all the way um, from 45 which is where the previous answer started and just go all the way through to 180. The functions f and g are given determine the equation of h which represents the graph of g shifting up by one unit and 30 degrees to the right. Okay, so g is currently sin of x plus 45. Now the graph of h is that graph shifted one unit up, okay, so the way that you would modify that is by saying plus one, okay, and then 40, uh, sorry, 30 degrees to the right. Remember, when you go to the right, that means minus, and when you go to the left, that means plus. So we're going to then say h of x is equal to sin, and then you're going to say x plus 45 minus 30, because they said it's going to go 30 degrees to the right, and then plus 1. So that means um, x plus 15 plus 1, and so that would be the final answer.